Hello everyone and welcome to the FPGA stand up for 26th of April 2022 from Open Research Institute. What we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned for the next week, if we need any resources and if we have any roadblocks. Um, so go ahead, Paul, you have the floor. And then uh, pick the next person after you. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Paul KB5MU. Uh, not too much going on in the remote lab this week. I did publish a new video with some help from Michelle. Um, this is a little walkthrough of using the, uh, the SR1 DVB S2 GSE receiver uh, as a lab equipment on the remote lab. And uh, in this case, we fed it with uh, GNU Radio. So a lot of the video is devoted to setting up the new radio. It starts with a, a blank VM and builds all the way up to the full experiment of transmitting uh, DDBS2 and receiving it on the SR1. Uh, that's now available. You can find it linked in the Slack and on YouTube. Let's go to the Open Research Institute web uh, uh, YouTube channel. There may be some more of those coming. We've got lots of other uh, DDBS2 equipment that needs to be uh, made available to people for testing and demonstrating. So there might be a few more such videos in the pipeline. Uh, otherwise, I don't have a lot to uh, report from the remote lab. I would like to introduce James, KJ7KDE, who's joining the call here, I think, for the first time. Uh, he's the uh, technician and uh, lab guy on the other side, on uh, the South Lab. So James, uh, please say hello. Hello, everyone. As Paul mentioned, uh, sorry, just a quick double check. Am I audible? You're good. Cool. Uh, I'm James, Kilo Juliet 7, Kilo Delta Echo. I'm an intern for ORI. I'm the technician taking care of Remote Lab South. Uh, not too much report from Remote Lab South either. We're currently, uh, we had a couple of storms recently that we had to take the lab offline for because we didn't want any of the equipment damage, but we are back up online and up and running. We are still getting some of the equipment set up because we're trying to get some of the facilities in place for that. We're considering some special construction just for all the equipment for Remote Lab South, but some of the um, conversation about that is still ongoing. Otherwise, uh, things are going well down here, and it's good to join you guys all. So yeah, uh, not too much else to say. I will then pass it on to, uh, well, my apologies if I'm saying this incorrectly, but Sota. Hi, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, Soto is, or Soto works. Anyways. <laughs> so this past week, um, so um, basically helping Everest testing, um, he found, so the week before he had found an issue uh, that the encoder just got stuck. Um, one issue and um, but apparently that's not the issue that he was facing and um, so i did found um so while fixing that issue i, I found the, the problem with the sequence uh, the um the frames got inverted the, the i'm calling it the frame sequence issue um that might be the issue that he's facing that the thing gets stuck. Um, so I did put a fix yesterday. I, th I think he's um, traveling and he will not be able to text, test for the next couple of days, but uh, I mean, hopefully that 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 was the problem. Um, and next, uh, I want to, so <laughs> we removed the, 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 the polyphase filter from the encoder and that means it's all VHD. Also, we can test, you know, all, the entire thing. In one part, we are not testing is the DVB wrapper, um, and the DVB wrapper has the code for, uh, like, extracting the the mod code from the the data stream, like the first word. Um, I might, yeah, I'm going to try to put some tests for that in the repository and then clean up um, test benches and scripts. Like, 
yeah, there's things that now are sort of obsolete. So. Um, and that is it, really. Oh, so next person, then Anshu. <laughs> hey, uh, so, yeah, uh, I got the integration working for ZC706, DBBS2 wrapper, and AD971 with JESD. Um, next step is testing. So, uh, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm having regular meetings with Everest. Uh, so he has suggested some tools that he uses to test it. So I will be setting up those tools in uh, UK lab and test the integrated environment. Uh, apart from that, I have been studying CUDA to, um, it's a step towards implementing DVP receiver for GPU. And also there is some software development activity going on for DVP receiver. Uh, for uh, DATV, so working on that also. So yeah, that's all from my side. You are muted, Michelle. I think I did the opposite of what I wanted. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's plenty. Um, you've just uh, touched on uh, three very large areas of work. Um, and so, so, uh, so James, just so you know, that Anshul Makar, he's the uh, coordinator of the remote labs in the UK. Uh, so it isn't quite as, uh, doesn't have quite as much um, equipment, test equipment as as we do for uh, West and South, but it has the heart of the communications uh, in that it has a ZC706 and an ADRV9371 and uh, maybe a few other things uh, along the way, so. So wonderful to have all three uh, remote lab directors here on one call. I think this might be the first time, hopefully not the last. And um, we'll keep working to make these labs accessible and useful for open source community around the world. So yeah, I'll give a short update, the uh, little bit of progress on HDL Coder. Uh, the actual coding in MATLAB is uh, coming along well, um, and that is not the problem. And the the calling up of Vivado and using Vivado command line within MATLAB is not the problem. And coding, uh, programming the FPGA in MATLAB is not the problem. Uh, but we cannot seem to get MATLAB to run uh, anything in, in, and put the FPGA in the loop. So the shorthand for this, just like you have hardware in the loop, HIL, FPGA in the loop is FIL. So all of the schemes from MATLAB so far have not worked for us. And we've dug into um, this as far as we possibly can. We've also reached out to uh, MATLAB through the MathWorks forums for, for a little bit of help here. Um, so we'll do- Shin, uh, What's the motivation? Uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. What's the motivation behind this exercise? Oh yeah, the for the FPGA in the loop and for the HDL coder, it's to use MATLAB scripts. Uh, so if you write your, your algorithms and you write your code in MATLAB, that it then goes all the way through to a bit stream. And that, mm -hmm. that you you also write the test bench okay. in MATLAB, and and that the entire workflow is is uh, is handled by essentially by MATLAB. This is a workflow mm -hmm. that analog devices heavily recommends uh, in uh, using okay. their their stuff, uh, and seems to be something that's really popular in academia and in some parts of industry. And so, this is okay. then another reason for doing this is to find out exactly how well it works which we're getting mm -hmm. lots of experience with <laughs> um, so that, that we can then go back to the open source community and say, hey, Octave and Lidex mm -hmm. and Python, you know, yeah. it works. It, it yes. can be, this can happen and, and maybe be a sort of a positive influence there or even start a project that does mm -hmm. a tool flow for open source version of, of this work. Um, we'd have a long way to kind of catch up because the the head start that that MATLAB has seems to be pretty substantial but um, you know using it firsthand and seeing how well it works or how mm -hmm. and where the problems are uh, shortcomings is uh, can, it can only help and across the board the the pilot program for this is is the uh, on the uh, uplink side so what we're really hoping to do is take Fred Harris's work in MATLAB for M17 encoder and then turn that into a bitstream that we they, and then that becomes a block, mm -hmm. uh, IP block that we then can incorporate into the end to end, you know, end, -to -end testing. Mm -hmm. um, 
demo. So there's an awful lot of stuff that has to happen and work right. And I was not expecting uh, it to be a problem in in this area that that somehow after you program the FPGA that then essentially running it would 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 come to a, a screeching halt. So I'm just going to say that maybe it's because we don't know uh, what we're doing or it's operator error, but we're carefully checking everything and and making sure that it wasn't a hardware or server issue. Uh, and we've learned a lot in that area too. So we'll do a memo about this and or maybe even a video and and write it up. Um, you know, but when it works, this should be um, a really nice workflow that has a lot of uh, momentum behind it from industry and academia. And it may uh, be something that we can uh, duplicate in, in open source. Um, so that's that's it for that particular area. Um, the Polarberry arrived, a completely different hardware platform. Um, this is a Polarfire FPGA that is paired up with RISC-V processors on a board. And it's a PCIe card that goes into a computer. And it got here yesterday and have not been able to program the FPGA because it either does or does not need another programming box. Um, so I'm ask, asking tech support and looking through the, the documentation and, and trying to figure out how to do it. It uses a completely I, different IDE uh, than Xilinx parts. It uses something called Libero, uh, which we got. It's a free license. Um, so anyway, that's looking at that to see if that's a, a good platform to use. And if so, we'll move it over to remote labs. And let's see, the 4th of May, we'll have a presentation that's about M17 forward error correction and other practical issues uh, that face us. Um, and I'm really hoping to have a demo. So if we can get the 706 um, ADRV 9371 working over the air uh, with, with the encoder, then I will bring it to the, to the talk and demonstrate it. Uh, and I'd really also like to bring the Pluto and show that working as well. Um, so I'm going to start asking on Slack for help in, um, you know, if, if, if I can do it, anybody can <laughs> setting up a demonstration on site. So it'll be May 4th um, and lots of photographs and, and um, a recording of the, the presentation. And it's cross-listed with IEEE, so it'll be IEEE. Uh, so I'm trying really hard to, to make that uh, be a sort of an intermediate demo because our big demonstration target is uh, in August at DEF CON um, in RF Village. All right, that's it for me. Any questions or discussion or uh, advice from, from the, anybody on the floor? When is this DEF CON? Uh, August 26th. Um, I think it's a little earlier. I think it's mid-August. Mid-August, okay. I think so. Um, Let's see, I can check right now. August the 11th through the 14th, 2022. And where it's on East Coast. It is West Coast. It will be West in Coast. Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas. At Caesars Palace, mostly. Okay. Or Caesars Forum. Yeah, Flamingo, Harris, and, and Link in, uh, in Las Vegas. So I'm not sure exactly which hotel we'll be in. Um, mm -hmm. One of those, the villages are mm -hmm. spread out over different uh, different properties on the strip. Mm -hmm. But we'll have that. We'll also have some some sort of footprint at the Ham Radio Village um, and Hardware Hacking Village is also very interested in anything that we have to bring. So mm -hmm. we'll, we should have uh, plenty plenty to show. I've, I've tried to get M17 to enter into the demo labs, which is a uh, several hour present, uh, several hours devoted to uh, prototypes and new products that, that want to, you know, make a big announcement. Um, so if it lines up for them that the M17 people might be uh, part of the demo labs at, uh, at DEF CON this year, and if not this year, then, then hopefully yeah. next year. So yeah, that's uh, and that's yeah, that's the, I think that's the, all the all that I know at the moment uh, about DefCon. Go ahead. A question for Anshul. Uh, you mentioned some set of testing things you're setting up in the UK mm. lab. Do I mm. need to be interested in 
duplicating that here in the West Lab? Or is that uh, going to be a unique setup there? No, it's not going to be unique. Uh, I mean, it will be helpful. Uh, like, I don't have any hardware to test. Uh, no. Um, sine wave analysis uh, analyzer or anything. So he said that you can use those software tools uh, using the libraries that are provided with uh, provided by ADI. So let me go through it, and that definitely will be helpful for people using sitting remotely and accessing the lab, and who don't have access to hardware. So yes. Okay, let me know how I can help. Sure. All right. Any other questions? All right, thank you, everybody. See you on Slack. Looking forward to the uh, the most upcoming, most recent, the most recently upcoming. I guess uh, <laughs> there's a better English way of saying that. Uh, but you know, the, looking forward to the fourth of May uh, and being able to show off everyone's work. It's extremely exciting. Uh, if you need me for anything at all, uh, please write me or get me on Slack. And uh, see you next week. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you all. You bet.